The Today's Word Podcast with Rick Pena. Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pena, and I'm bringing you Today's Word for August 6, 2018. Now, I'm going live early this morning because I do have to go catch a flight, but if you're watching this video, whether you're watching it now, at, you know, just past 5 o'clock in the morning or later on in the day, uh, maybe, or a year from now, the same anointing that's on me now is on this video as you watch it. So open up your heart to receive what God is saying. So I'm bringing you today's word for August 6th. Like I said, I'm teaching a series uh, entitled Expecting the Word to Work. This is actually part 36 of the series. We've been studying the parable of the sower for a while now, for months, and I want to go back to it this morning. So on Friday, I shared a message uh, from this parable based on a conversation that I had with a young person. Um, and, and I told you that this young person routinely takes uh, the responsibility for their actions and wants to assign it to somebody else, right? So they don't want to take responsibility for their own actions and they want to shift the blame for what happens to them on God or on other people. And when I had a conversation with them about this, uh, you know, even after I did today's word on Friday, this was funny, uh, this person actually said to me, and, and, and this is what um, you know, it's just a different perspective. And sometimes we have to teach people as they're growing up to really think like God, right? So this person was saying to me, well, if God treats me uh, the way that, you you know, if God allows me basically to, to have to deal with all my decisions and God knows that, you know, uh, this is not the best thing, but I'm making a mistake and God just lets me make the mistake and then God just lets me deal with the mistake, um, then God is just being petty. <laughs> That's what the person said. The person said, well, I mean, if God knows that there's something better and he wants something better for me and uh, he knows that I'm young and I'm making a mistake and he just lets me deal with what I did instead of what he, you know, what he should give me as, as a heavenly father, then God is just being petty. And I had to laugh because I don't know if that's just a millennial perspective or something, but, but obviously it's, it's somebody that's not rooted and grounded in the word of God. There's a system that works, right? I mean, there's a system that God created. The system is laid out in his word. That's why we must study the word to understand how God thinks, to understand how this whole earth functions. This, this earth functions on a, on a system of seed time and harvest, of, of cause and effect, uh, of sowing and reaping, the free will of humans. We get to decide. We get to make decisions. We are free moral agents. And so God wants us to make decisions that are pleasing in the sight, which leads me to the title of today's message. So the title of today's message is simply pleasing in God's sight. When we live our lives down here in the earth, God wants us to be pleasing to him. And we'll learn that today from this parable. So in the parable, we see a sower who went out of his way to sow seed into soil. Now, the soil doesn't have to seek the sower. The sower seeks the soil. And then the sower provides the soil everything that it needs to produce a harvest. But the harvest, watch this. Here's the whole point. The harvest is not contingent upon the seed. The harvest, or the size of the harvest, is not contingent upon the sower. The harvest is actually contingent upon the soil. The way that the soil receives and responds to the seed, or does it receive and respond you know, to the seed, uh, determines whether or not a harvest is produced. And the issue is not with the sower, the issue is not with the seed, the issue is with the soil. And this is where this young person was missing it, that they don't want to take responsibility for their own actions, for their own decisions. Uh, for They don't want to reap a harvest on the decisions that they make because they say, well, sometimes I don't make good decisions. So I would rather God just look past my decisions and give me the best anyway. And unfortunately, young person, you know, young man, young woman, or really even old man, old, old woman, it just doesn't work that way. <laughs> Life doesn't work that way. You're going to reap what you sow. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. And so if you don't like the harvest that you're reaping, you got to check the seed that you're sowing. All right. So with that said, let's get back to the parable. I'm going to just kind of give you the whole parable this morning and then we'll get into it. So a farmer is like someone who plants God's teaching inside of people. That's what Jesus said. Now, sometimes the teaching falls along the path. The path is like the people who hear the teaching, but they don't understand it. So since they don't understand it, Satan comes immediately and snatches away the word that was sown in their heart. Now, other people are like the seed that's planted on rocky ground. They hear the teaching. They quickly, gladly accept it. They get all excited, but they don't allow the teaching go, to go deep into their lives. And then as soon as trouble comes or persecution comes because of the word that they receive, these people, they're quick to give up. 
Now, other people I like to see that's planted on thorny weeds. Now, these are people who hear the teaching, but their lives become full of other things, like the kids of this world, the love of money, everything else they want. And so these other things are like weeds that grow up and choke out the word so the word doesn't produce a harvest in their lives. And then lastly, some people I like the seed that's planted on good ground. And so they receive the word of God. But even then, watch this. Some people receive a 30 fold return. Some people receive a 60 fold return. And even some people receive a 100 fold return. And everybody in the whole story, all the soil had the power to produce a 100 fold return. But not everybody produced it. Three out of the four soils didn't produce anything. And then the last soil, the good ground, even then produced varying results. And it all had to do with the soil. It didn't have to do with the seed. It didn't have to do with the sower. So what does this mean to you today? On this Monday morning, as we seek to set the tone for the whole week, what does this mean to you today about living a life that is pleasing in God's sight? You ready? I have, let me see, three things to share with you this Monday morning. Let's get into them. Here we go. Number one, look at me. When I was talking to this person, this person was like, if God loves me, then, then God should just bless me anyway, because if not, God is being petty. Number one, God's love is not the issue. <laughs> Let, let's, let's make sure that we understand that. God loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. God, nothing you did caused God to start loving you, and nothing you can do to make, will make him stop loving you. God loves you, period. Your actions, your performance cannot make God love you any more or any less because God is love. I know that people really don't like what I just said, but it's the truth. Nothing you do can make God love you more. Nothing you do can make God love you less. God loves you, and, and love is actually not something that he does. Love is not something that he gives. Love is who he is. God is love. The sower provided all four types of soil the same opportunity. It, he gave them seed that could produce a hundredfold return, and he gave it to everybody. He did not discriminate. Likewise, God offers all people eternal life. Listen, let me just pause here to say this. If you don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sins, if you were to die today and you're not sure whether or not you go to heaven or hell, then you need to pause and acknowledge and accept Jesus as Lord in this moment. God gives everybody on the planet the same opportunity for eternal life. Jesus died for everyone. Jesus died for everyone, everywhere. He died for every race, every color, every creed, all gen male and female. It doesn't matter, young and old, he died for everybody. And so God loves everybody and he offers eternal life to everybody by his unearned and his, his unmerited favor by grace. God gives us, offers us eternal life, but we have to accept it. We have to accept the gift that is being offered to us, and that is the gift of eternal life. And we, we get to decide whether or not we accept the gift. Number two, your performance does not impact God's love, but it does impact God's pleasure, which is what I'm dealing with today. And so you, it will determine your, your performance is not about an issue of love. It's an issue of pleasure, and your performance will determine the harvest that you reap on the seed uh, you sow. So the seed that's that's been planted in your heart and then also the seed that you sow, you know, how you receive it, how you walk it out, how you walk with God concerning it, that's going to, that will impact the size of the harvest or whether you receive a harvest at all. So let me say it this way, because I was talking to this young person about love and all that. And it was like, well, if God loves me, listen, stop. God loves you. But it's, it really comes down to, do you love God? I mean, it's not an issue that does God love you? God loves you. Do you love God? Do you love God enough to live a life that is pleasing in his sight? You can love your children, but still be displeased with their actions, right? I mean, you love your children and you can love them, but you're still going to be upset if they're doing stuff that they're not supposed to be doing, that you taught them something else that you say, hey, listen, son, listen, daughter, this is what I want you to do. This is how you can live a life that is pleasing in my sight and they choose to do something else, then yeah, you still love them, but you're displeased. Jesus made it clear that the sower provided all four types of soil, the same seed, but he also made it clear that, that it didn't produce the same results. Jesus was not pleased with, with three out of the four types of soil. They failed to produce a harvest on the investment that God made in them. Now, this doesn't change the fact that God loves them. This doesn't change, it has nothing to do with God's love. It becomes an issue of his pleasure. God is pleased when we make the most of the opportunities that he gives us. It's just that simple. God is a heavenly father and he gives us opportunities and he, he has given us his word. He's given us his spirit. He covered us with the blood of his son. He calls us according to his purpose and he gives us opportunities by his 
free flowing grace, his unmerited favor. And he's pleased when, with us when we make the most of those opportunities. He's also disappointed when we don't. Number three, your desire sh should be to live a life that is pleasing in God's sight. On this Monday morning, as I, I'm wrapping up this is the third point now, as you're preparing for this week, listen, your desire, the desire in your heart. Matter of fact, if you're watching this video, it's because you want to grow, right? You want to be the man, the woman that God called you to be. So your desire should be to live a life that is pleasing in God's sight. In Psalms 84 and 11, the Bible says there is nothing, no good thing that God will withhold from those who walk upright before him. Every good thing that God has for you, he's going to release to you when you're walking upright before him, when you're walking in accordance with his kingdom plans and purposes for your life, when you're being led of the Holy Spirit in all things, when you're allowing the word of God to be the ruler by which you judge every decision. See, your conduct does not change God's love, but it does have a lot to do with his pleasure towards you. Your conduct dictates whether or not you leave a a live a life that is pleasing in his sight. So your conduct it's not an issue of love. It's an issue of pleasure. So you want to live a life. You know what? Every day, this Monday morning, this week, you want to say, you know what, Father, I love you and I love you so much. I know you love me. That I want to conduct myself in such a way that I'm pleasing to you. I want to conduct myself in such a way that I'm bringing glory to your name. I, I want to, my mother, <laughs> when I was growing up in Brooklyn, and um, I remember one time I took my jeans and, and when where jeans were holes in them were, were in style. Well, they didn't style again, but this was a long time ago. And I took some jeans and I, and I really took some time in my room and I put all these holes in my jeans and I ripped them all up real nice. And I was in the mirror checking myself out. And I was about to go out the house and, and I had to pass by the kitchen to go out the house in Brooklyn. And my mother was in the kitchen and my mother stopped me and she said, hey, where are you going? I said, I'm going outside. And she said, not look like that. She said, the problem with that is that when you go outside, you represent me and you look like a fool. If you could go outside looking like a fool and just represent you, I'm cool with that. But since everybody knows that you're my son, I can't, I can't allow you to go outside looking like a fool because now you're going to make me look like a fool because you represent me. And this is what it's about. When you call, when you name the name of Jesus and you call yourself a Christian and you say that you represent God, then your conduct has to be conduct that is conducive with, with the representation of God. You are representing Christ in this world. You're supposed to live as Jesus is on this planet. So God wants you to live a life that produces fruit and for your fruit to remain. That's John 15 and 16. He provides you everything you need to produce that fruit. He's actually working in you. He's the one that gives you the words and performs the work. And he does all of this so that you can yield to him so that your conduct is, is conducive with his character so that you can represent him in this world so that when people look at you, they see Jesus and they come in contact with him. That's what it's all about. That's why we have to live a life that is pleasing in God's sight. That's why our conduct has to line up with the word of God. That's why we're seeking to be led of the Holy Spirit so that we could be living emissaries, ambassadors in this world. We are ambassadors sent from heaven to the planet to represent heaven down here on a daily basis. We're supposed to experience heaven on earth. That's how we represent God. That's how we represent Jesus. That's how we represent him in everything that we do. So as you head into this day and into this week and every meeting, every conversation, all the activity that you're going to engage in, I pray that you make a decision right now that you are going to live a life that is pleasing in God's sight. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to declare this over your life now. Say this. Say, Father, this is a season of expectation for me. My expectation is tied to your word. So I take self inventory this morning. I look at me. I consider my ways. I assess my actions. I evaluate my desires. I make a conscious effort to die to sin, self and selfishness. My only desire is to please you, Father. I only want what you want for me. I only want to become the person that you destined me to be. So I refocus recalibrate and recenter my life completely in you. By faith, I declare that I live a life that is pleasing in your sight. I know you love me, but I also want you to be pleased with me. So I conduct myself in accordance with your word. I declare this by faith in Jesus name. Amen. This is today's word. Apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org. There's a subscribe button on the right hand side. Get it. Get the messages and share this message with someone that you know. Head into this day. Make sure that your conduct and your character is pleasing to God. Represent him 
in this world. God bless you.